Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, September 8th, 2023. Let's get into it. You know, the first thing I wanted to cover in this video is the uh, election that's coming up. And uh, I'm, I'm very considering Ron DeSantis. Uh, he did a heck of an interview with uh, the Rubin Report. And uh, I got a couple clips from that uh, it, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm back and forth on Trump. Uh, and the reason uh, being that Trump did such a good job, uh, the persecution that he's faced with these uh, endless idiocy that the Democrats are trying to do with uh, charging him with insurrection, insurrection, is just absurd. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, you got people like Dick Cheney he came out and said... Uh, in our nation's 246-year history, there has never been an individual who was a greater threat to our republic than Donald Trump. What an endorsement for Donald Trump, huh? <laughs> the greatest neocon killed millions of people in Iraq. Dick Cheney uh, coming out against Trump. I thought it was a huge endorsement for Trump, but I did want to get into uh, DeSantis. And uh, watching the interview, uh, DeSantis pointed out some good things. Uh, you know, one of the things that never made sense to me was the way that Trump handled COVID. You know, he went along with what Fauci said. He uh, recommended the uh, the lockdowns. He uh, went along uh, with Operation Warp Speed and put out the, the jab. Uh, whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing, that's up to you. And so he did a lot of things wrong, and he never fired Fauci. Let's watch the first clip here on uh, DeSantis talking about Trump's uh, lack of leadership. When it came to dealing with, with the CDC and uh, what's the other, uh, well, anyway, I'll let, let's let DeSantis give it to you himself. This morning, President Trump was on Hugh Hewitt's radio show and uh, Hugh asked him about firing Fauci and Trump's exact quote was, you're not allowed to fire him. I suspect you probably have a, a different take on what you can do with these civil servants like Fauci. Sure. Well, first of all, it's important to point out for a long time, that was not his excuse. His excuse had been that if you fired Fauci, both the Democrats and the media would have pitched a fit, which, of course, is 100 percent true. Uh, but that's the price of leadership. you got to stand up and do what's right. Um, clearly, he could have been fired from the White House task force. There was no obligation to run him out at press conference after press conference, have him doing media interviews. You know, during the, the height of kind of the COVID stuff in 2020, Fauci would do local hits in Florida media attacking me uh, for having schools open and some of these other stuff. So there was no obligation to do that. I think you could have also fired him uh, from NIH because... He had basically uh, committed uh, misconduct with the gain of function. Uh, you also had him uh, saying that it was naturally occurring when they knew it was a lab leak. All that stuff has come out now. Uh, so I think, yes, you fire him. And here's the thing, Dave. If it's the right thing to do, you do it. If they sue you, they sue you. But you had the basis to do that, and you should have done it, and the country would have been better off had he done it. So wasn't that interesting? I thought that... DeSantis gave a good uh, a good argument there, and then the next thing that DeSantis went into uh, was, you know, Dave Rubin. I give him credit, man. He asked some great questions, and he says, you know, how is this? How is DeSantis going to appeal to the MAGA base? Because I'm going to tell you, you drive around the rural countryside here in Florida, uh, and I, I can only speak for my local area. Nothing but Trump signs. There's no no DeSantis. Well, there. I mean, there are DeSantis signs, but mainly for him as, as governor when he ran for governor. So he's got a long ways to overcome. But then when you listen to this argument right here, it almost makes me think, you know, maybe I will vote for DeSantis in the primary. I don't know, man. I'm on the fence about this. Uh, you tell me what you think. I thought this was a great, great reply by DeSantis. Let's watch it because his entire family moved to Florida under my governorship. Yeah. What's your message to the ride or die Trump people like that? The hardcore MAGA base that before all of this, they loved you, but they're just going with Trump. But you know that you have to get some of those people to win this thing. Well, nobody in, in the United States, in the Republican Party, 
has delivered more on America First policies and principles than me. Uh, if you look at it, immigration, illegal immigration, uh, we've banned sanctuary cities, we've cracked down on human smuggling, we even sent illegal aliens to beautiful Martha's Vineyard. Uh, and so we've put our money where our mouth is. You talk about things like China. We've banned the purchase of land by the CCP and its affiliates in our state. We got rid of things like Confucius Institutes, and we cracked down on their influence of universities. Uh, you look at what we've done for expand Second Amendment rights with constitutional carry. Look at what we've done to fight uh, against the woke agenda, whether it's fighting Disney involving education or fighting this ESG movement, which is really bad uh, for our economy and for American families, the way they're going after domestic energy production. You want to talk about draining the swamp? Uh, there's one guy in this entire country that's ever taken action against Soros-backed prosecutors, and that's me. And we've removed two of them from office uh, in the last year, year and a half, who were not following the law and were putting their political agenda over public safety. I cleared out the election supervisors in South Florida when I became governor. We've banned Zuckerbucks. We've banned ballot harvesting. We have universal voter ID, and we even have an election crimes task force, uh, police force in state government, which, which prosecutes uh, voter fraud. So we have the best election integrity in the entire country. So I think in terms of delivering on these things, Nobody's delivered more than I have, and everything I promised the voters I, I would do, I've delivered on and exceeded those promises. And so you got a guy like me going in there. You know, you'll have two terms of somebody uh, that that the people in Washington do not want to see up there. The corporate press does not want to see me up there, and the Democrats don't want to see me up there because they realize I don't just say this stuff in a campaign season. When I tell you I'm going to do something, I follow through and I do it. So wasn't that interesting? That was pretty cool. Uh, let's get into the um, the other news that's gone on around the world. Uh, I guess the biggest thing. I, uh, well, we'll save we'll save Ukraine for the last. Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing you probably don't know uh, if you've been watching some videos, uh, real estate is crashing. And I predicted this for a long time, and a lot of people on YouTube have predicted there are people now that can't sell their homes. They just can't get a reasonable price for their homes, especially if you're, you know, you're upwards of two hundred thousand to to the eight hundred thousand dollar range. People just can't afford to buy them now. I, we're booming here in Florida, but I'm hoping. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say I'm hoping, I'm, you know, but I, I think things are going to start to slow down here, just like they are around the rest of the country. So, I just want to let you know. Now, how can you take advantage of that? Uh, well, if, if if I do see a bump, I mean, I, I unfortunately, I'm not like the economic ninja. He's got a whole course on uh, buying and selling real estate. I'd love to buy it, but I just don't have the money to go out there and, and buy a ton of real estate unless precious metals take off. Uh, and then I can sell some of my, I've got it stored various locations uh, with various companies, uh, some precious metals, and I could sell those off and convert that into real estate. Uh, but I, you know, in my, do I know how to do that? No, I've never really gotten into that. Uh, like I said, we're doing the other news first. Uh, we got Carrie Lake. Uh, she just won a big court case. It looks like her legal team may, may get to review the signatures in um, Maricopa County. Isn't, isn't that, wasn't it Maricopa in, in Arizona? I mean, what the hell? Can you imagine an election where you can't even review the signatures? <laughs> How absurd are the Democrats? You know you're cheating when you won't even let your opponent review the signatures to see if they match. Uh, of course, they said that there's other ways that those signatures matched, uh, which were, were not in the Arizona Constitution. So we could see a possible uh, move in, in that whole gubernatorial process. I'm so proud of Carrie Lake to keep this thing going because it's, it's, it's absurd. It's absurd. There were so many shenanigans that took place in Arizona you know, we all know it. Everybody knows it. It's just that uh, they use the legal system to, to, to keep things off. Uh, let's get into, uh, I thought this was very interesting, was uh, this is a Belarus combat training uh, video, and uh, I couldn't find, well, it's unredacted. I just didn't want to go back, and, you know, I can only got so much time. And they put up, there's a, there's a new video out in Ukraine where they're recruiting uh, women now. Because they've run out of men to fight in the war, for the most part, other than the, the 
crippled, the old, and the very, very young. Um, so now they're trying to recruit young women, which I imagine would make good troops uh, if they could get the training. I'm not sure they're going to get time to get the training. But I wanted to show you what, what a military force looks like that's training. This is in Belarus. Look at these buff young men. This, this is what I used to look like when I was 30 years old. Here you go. Совместное и специальное учение взаимодействия. Торжественного строю сводное подразделение Министерства внутренних дел. Now, that is a fighting force, and that's, that's what training is all about. So we'll see. We'll see. Those are the troops that uh, the Polish are going to be up against if they march into western Ukraine. Uh, they look pretty, pretty buff to me. You know, it's not all about the hardware. A lot of times it's about the troops, and they look like some sharp-minded young men. So uh, let's get into the last uh, video on one... Well, the last couple videos here was uh, there was a strike in Kostanovka, Kostanovka, God dang it, hard problem pronouncing these names, market. It killed uh, 16 people and uh, had 33 wounded. Now, the Ukrainians are blaming it on the Russians. The Russians are blaming it on the Ukrainians. I couldn't find uh, any anything beyond just propaganda, but this is this is the Russian slant on uh, what took place uh, in that market. I wanted to show you this because it brings home the carnage. I mean, you know, when you say 13 dead, 33 wounded, I mean, imagine if a bomb exploded down the street from you, uh, like we've got the, you know, the market here uh, that's close by that I go and shop at. If a bomb exploded there and I, I witnessed 13 people dying and 33 wounded and the blood and the, and the destruction, it's horrifying. It's absolutely horrifying. Well, let's watch that video. Markovich, who joins me from Vienna. Alexander, Ukraine is claiming that Russia is behind that artillery strike on Konstantinovka, but evidence would suggest otherwise. What are your, what's your take on that? Well, in this particular situation, I have actually a similar opinion to Julian Röpke, but only in this particular situation, um, that it couldn't be Russia, who committed this attack, but Ukraine, um, guessing alone from the direction the uh, rocket came on the one hand. And on the other hand, I guess it's also obvious that the tactics which were used in these attacks are particularly Ukrainian because Ukraine is somehow famous for trying to escalate this conflict over Ukraine into an international conflict because Ukraine's only chance um, to actually prolong this war is um, to let their Western allies commit to even more engagement in this whole war. And they can only do that We are staged war crimes or we are um, supposedly um, attacks on civilians by the Russian military, etc. And therefore, I guess this attack in Konstantinovka is um, definitely something which you could attribute to the um, likes of the SBU either or to the Ukrainian army itself, because as we know, um, alone from the failed counteroffensive, the Ukrainian military is actually not um, known for sparing the lives of their own soldiers or of its own civilians.
Yeah, the timing is certainly suspicious given that the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was in Kiev at the time on a surprise visit. So do you think that this was a false flag then by Ukraine to try to get perhaps more support for even more aid given that the U.S. Secretary of State was there? I would definitely say so because Ukraine is uh, really dependent on letting this conflict escalate as much as possible. You can also guess it, for example, from the frequent drone attacks on the um, nuclear power plant in Saporizhia. And therefore, I guess, um, as was said before, that this attack is very similar to the attack on Kramatorsk last year and um, similar events. And therefore, it's yeah, hidden in plain sight that it must have been Ukraine and not Russia. What's your take on the coverage of this attack by the Western media? Because we know the Western media tends to have a pro-Ukrainian stance. And, and when attacks like this happen, they're always very quick to say, oh, obviously it was Russia. And oftentimes it comes out, in, like in this case, where the evidence doesn't point to that. And sometimes they do walk back, walk it back, or sometimes they don't even mention that. What, what would you have to say as far as the coverage of the Western media in this case? Yeah, in this particular case, I guess it's um, very interesting that um, today the Western media uh, stopped to portray this attack as a genuine uh, Russian attack and that they um, yeah, somehow tried to remain more silent about this topic, which is usually the case when it was not a Russian attack, but in the aftermath it played out to be a Ukrainian attack. And um, yeah, that's Julian Röpke, which is one of the chief propagandists of the pro-Ukrainian faction uh, in the German media actually admits that it couldn't have been a Russian attack, I guess this says everything. This um, tells you that it must have been an Ukrainian attack and it's of course very nefarious that the West always tries to portray um, this very incident staged by Ukraine as Russian attacks. Mm. But um, the fact that the West and the Western media are doing this only shows you that they are even more desperate to convince their own population that this war against Russia has to be continued. And I guess the more the war support uh, for the West is dwindling, the more desperate um, all these accusations and fake news um, will be against Russia. And therefore, I guess this um, coverage of the attack in Konstantinivka is uh, just yeah, another part, another puzzle part in the whole picture of the West trying to demonize Russia and to portray it as a devilish force which has to be um, yeah, liquidated basically and um, yeah, destroyed into several pieces just um, to keep up Western hegemony. And therefore, you have this argumentation, of course. Mm. All right, we're going to leave it there. Saguaro Institute head Alexander Markovich, thank you so much. All right, so that was that video. I get, oh, I, did, I had a tweet. <laughs> this is this is a cute tweet. Hold on, let me get the, get this one up. So this is from Charlie Kirk, and I guess we're going to have to boycott another damn company. So Liberty Safe, I, I don't own a Liberty Safe, uh, but I I would not ever own one now. <laughs> <laughs> they're going the way of Bud Light. I'm guaranteed prediction. They're going the way of Bud Light because Liberty Safe uh, was sold to Mon Monomery Capital Partners in 2021, a liberal East Coast investment firm. And I pulled the FEC reports on the company and found approximately 400,000 over the last 10 cycles of max donations to the Liberty to the Democrats. And uh, but what they did. Uh, was there was a guy uh, that was being investigated by the FBI. They, the FBI didn't even have search warrants, didn't have anything, didn't even have a subpoena. And I guess they can override the combination to the safe. And so they gave the FBI the information to, to open up the guy's safe, just like that. Would you buy a Liberty safe? I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Uh, but let's continue to read. Uh, so they've given donations to Raphael Warm Warnock, uh, John Fetterman, uh, of course, uh, the, the zombie in Pennsylvania, uh, Mandela Barnes in Wisconsin, I don't know who that is, and Mark Kelly in Arizona. Liberty Safe Current CEO Justin Hillebrand was a founding partner of Monomi, M-O-N-O-M-O-I, 
and donated 4600 to Obama for America. And we're supposed to be surprised that they betrayed their customers to the FBI as quickly as human possible. <laughs> That's what Democrats do. They don't care about people. They just care about corporations and the three-letter agencies. And an open border and child trafficking. That's what Democrats are. All right, we're going to finish off with the Russian hardware video. Peace out. Stay free. Say hi to boo. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.